Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture on mechanics of machinery. So far we have studied about the kinematic links and they connecting with each other to form kinematic pairs. So in this video we will be studying about the kinematic chains, mechanisms and how to calculate the degree of freedom or mobility analysis of this mechanisms. So kinematic chains and mechanisms are the two basic terms that you are seeing here. So kinematic chain means when you are connecting the different links to form a loop in such a way that the first and last link are being connected directly or indirectly. So they will be known as kinematic chains. And this kinematic chains becomes a mechanism when one of the link of this kinematic chain is fixed to the ground. So the basic or necessary condition for a chain to become a mechanism is there should be at least one fixed link so that the motion of one link within the mechanism will be resulting in a definite motion to the other links. So we'll be studying in detail about these mechanisms and chains and their mobility or degree of freedom we'll be calculating. So here you can see a kinematic chain, how we are forming the kinematic chain. So here you can see links, these are known as links. Here you can see one, two, three, four links are here. And here I'll be making connections in between these links. One connection will be made at this point at this point, at this point, at this point. If you are seeing, all these links will be forming turning pairs. Turning, may, turning pair means there is relative motion is turning or revolution. So if I am taking this link as here, which is fixed, and this link as here, which is making a turning pair, where the circular end is coming with the respect to, within the uh, whole end, so that the rotation motion will be happening. A similar four turning pairs, one turning pair at here, another at here, another at here will be formed to make this kinematic chain. So that you will be getting this kinematic chain, which is connected in a loop form. And in your notebook, you can represent it by symbol, this four lines, you can represent a kinematic chain. And this kinematic chain, this will, this is known as a four bar chain, which are having four number of links. And this becomes a mechanism when there is at least one fixed link. So if you are seeing here, this link is fixed, that is shown by the end conditions. Or in another way, I can represent a mechanism, you students can represent the mechanism on your notebook by drawing these four lines which will be indicating a uh, chain and this fixed link will be making this a mechanism. If you are having a mechanism, the animation of this one will be looking like this, where one link is fixed and if I am giving input motion to this link, this will be giving definite motion to the other links also. So that we can call it as a mechanism. Here it is known as four bar mechanism as it is made up of four links. And now we will be studying the mobility or degree of freedom of mechanisms. So what is the different motions which are possible or how you can define the degree of freedom of mechanism. Before studying the degree of freedom of mechanism, we will be majorly specifying or concentrating on the planar mechanism which are happening in a plane. Uh, in other way, there are mechanisms which are in space or spatial mechanisms are there. But the analysis or its degree of freedom calculation is somewhat uh, tedious. So anyway, here we will be studying or our focus is mainly on planar mechanism. So before studying the degree of freedom of mechanism, I am defining the degree of freedom of a simple link in a plane. So if you are considering this link which is lying within this plane, it can have three degrees of freedom within this plane. One is translation along this x-axis, translation along this y-axis and it can rotate about the z axis. So two translations and one rotation is possible, which is the degree of freedom of any link in this plane. So the total degree of freedom of this planar link is three. Now I am making a chain or I am connecting different links. So if you are having four number of links, each link is having three degree of freedom. So the total number of degrees of freedom attached with this four bar chain will be three into four. Similarly, if you are having n number of links, then the total degree of freedom possible for the chain which is formed by n number of links will be 3 in 1. So now we have talked about the chain. But you know that in mechanism, there should be at least one link to be fixed. So the number of movable limbs, links will be getting reduced from n to n minus 1. So this will be providing you the degrees of freedom. So the actual, So the total degree of freedom possible for the mechanism will be becoming now 3 into n minus 1 because it is becoming a mechanism from a 
kinematic chain. But if you are noticing, when one link is making connection with another link to form pair, this will be imposing certain constraints on the relative motion. That means, when you are for a rigid body, in plane it is having 3 degrees of freedom. But when you are making connections or when you are forming a pair, some degrees of freedom will be lost. As a result, the degree of freedom of entire mechanism will be lost. For example, if you are seeing here, here I am having two links, each of these links separately having 3 degrees of freedom for this plane. For making pair, I will be fixing one link here and I will be attaching this link so that they will be forming a turning pair. And if you are seeing the turning pair or their um, animation, the relative motion possible only for this turning pair formed by these two links is single one. That means this rotation is only possible. So if you are seeing the degree of freedom of this mechanism or for this kinematic pair is 1 where total possible degrees of freedom was 3 and this is reduced to 1 because of the connection that means it is losing 2 degrees of freedom out of the total 3 as a result of the connection they form to uh, as a result of the connection they are forming to form the kinematic pair so similarly if you are seeing that means a single degree of freedom is having two restraints Ma means previously we have seen that total degree of freedom was 3 and they are forming a single degree of freedom means out of 3 2 degrees of freedoms are reduced and that is known as restraints so a single degree of freedom is having two restraints similarly if you are seeing a two degree of freedom pair will be having one restraint means out of three now one is one degree of freedom is reduced which i will be calling as restraint and now you will be having two degrees of freedom and the number of restraints can never be zero or three there is total three degrees of freedoms are there and zero means nothing is lost and that never happens when you are forming a pair and the number of restraints three means all the degrees of freedoms are lost it means it becomes a rigid body so that in that case also it is no longer a kinematic pair so for a planar mechanism for a pair the number of restraints will be two and one so if you are counting the number of pairs with a one degree of freedom is p1 one degree of freedom means two restraints or two degrees of freedoms are lost so if there are n number p1 number of pairs then the lost degrees of freedom will be 2 into p1 and similarly if i am naming the p2 as the number of pairs with the two degrees of freedom which are having one restraint then the lost degrees of freedom will be 1 into p2 so these are the uh, relation between the number of pairs with the one degree of freedom and their corresponding lowest degrees of freedom. So, if you are taking a case where for a planar mechanism with n number of links where one link is fixed, the total available degrees of freedom were 3 into n minus 1. But because of connection, because of the restraints formed due to connection, degrees of freedoms are lost, which you will be getting 3 into n minus 1 minus 2 p1 minus 1 p2. And if you are taking a spatial mechanism, you will be getting 6, which is the total degree of freedom for the uh, link in space. And for the movable links, 6 into n minus 1. And in this way, you can fill the degrees of freedom based on the number of pairs, uh, number of pairs with the corresponding 1 degree of freedom, 2 degree of freedom. And this 5, the coefficient, coefficients are representing the lowest degrees of freedom per each kinematic pair. So this equation is used for finding the degree of freedom of planar mechanism which we will be focusing mainly and this criteria is called as Kutzpah criteria or Kutzpah equation and we will be using this equation for finding the uh, degrees of freedom for planar mechanism or conducting the mobility analysis. So if you are seeing the actual degree of freedom for uh, the planar mechanism according to Kutzpah criteria is 3 into n minus 1 minus 2 p1 minus 1 into p2. Or simply p2 and if you're seeing p1 is the number of pairs with the one degree of freedom and i will be calling this as lower pairs if you're seeing this is a one degree of freedom pair which is forming turning pair and if you're seeing the kind of area or the contact made between the link this this links is area of contact that means they are maintaining an area of contact which makes it a lower pair so pairs which are having area of contact is known as lower pairs 
and this i will be counting it as a binary join jo binary join means a join where two links are joined so in mechanisms i'll i have to and actually i have to replace this equation in terms of this lower pairs or binary joins p1 i will be replacing to binary joins and p2 i will be rep uh, replacing to uh, the higher pairs so here instead of p1 p1 you are knowing that it is the number of pairs with a one degree theta and i can consider this p1 as the number of lower pairs and in the equation i will be replacing p1 and i will be using a term j which is representing the number of lower pairs or number of binary joints or i'll be calling it as number of equivalent binary joints in previous video you have studied that if you are having a ternary join which is equivalent to two binary joints and if it you are having a quaternary join which is equivalent to three equivalent binary joints so here j will be representing the number of equivalent binary joints similarly p2 is the number of pairs with two degree of freedom so here you are seeing a pair formed by this disk rolling on this flat surface which are having two degrees of freedom which is the uh, rolling as well as the translation so if you are considering these are these pairs or the elements within the pairs are having a point or line contact so which makes it a higher pairs higher pair means which are having point or line contact in between them so i will be replacing this p2 which is the number of pairs with the two degree of freedom by higher pairs so that i will be using a new term called h which is representing the number of higher pairs so i will be rewriting this kutz back criteria instead of p1 and p2 i will be writing j and h so now actual degree of freedom of planar mechanics according to kutz back criteria can be written as 3 into n minus 1 minus 2j minus h where j is the number of equivalent binary joints and h is the number of higher pairs and now i will be using this equation for finding the degree of freedom of different mechanisms i will be showing here so here you are having a four bar mechanism this four bar mechanism is formed from a four bar chain so this is a four bar chain where uh, the four number of links are connected in a way to form a loop and here out of this i am fixing one link so whenever you are having a fixed link it becomes a mechanism so now it is a mechanism and in mechanism i am actually not showing the fixed link so fixed link will be coming here so i will be finding the degree of freedom of this mechanism using the kutz back criteria so i'll be naming the number of links number of links is named one now two three and four next i have to find the number of equivalent binary joints here you are having joints here binary join one binary join two i'll be numbering one two three four so four binary joints are there and there is no higher pairs because the all pairs are having area of contact this all turning pairs are lower pairs and there is no higher pair so the value of number of links is four number of equivalent binary joints is four and number of higher pairs is zero so now you will be substituting into kutz back criteria which is three into n minus one minus two j minus h finally you will be getting degree of freedom as one degree of freedom one means you can describe the motion of each of this link if you are knowing the input that is given to this link means if you are giving an uh, input theta in terms of the uh, rotation for the link 2 given then you can find if we, this dimension of this link is r this is uh, some this is r2 this is r3 and this is r4 then you can find the coordinate of all points with respect to this dimensions and the single angle means this point can be written in terms of its x coordinate will be r2 cos theta and r2 sin theta y is y coordinate is r2 sin theta similarly you can address the coordinates of all points with respect to their given dimensions and the single angle so a single variable is required for defining the motion of this links that is actually the significance of the degrees of freedom so for this four bar mechanism degree of freedom according to kutz back criteria is one so if you are taking a five bar mechanism where five number of links are there and this one is showing the fixed number of links here i have to count the number of links count the number of equivalent binary joints and count the uh, higher pairs so here one two three four five five links are there and one two three four five five equivalent binary joints are there and there is also no higher pair so if you are substituting n equal to five j equal to five h equal to zero if you are substituting the degree of freedom will be getting as 2 means here to completely define the motion of each of the link you will have to give or represent or address two parameters two angular displacement or some other parameters you have to use so that is the degree of freedom 
which is 2 coming for this 5 bar mechanism. Now we will be taking a slider cam mechanism where you are having a slider, uh, sorry, where you are having a uh, crank, connecting rod, a slider and the ground. Here also one fixed link is there where I am attaching the end of crank and here also the same fixed link is there on which this slider is reciprocating. So the number of links are 1 and here also I am marking 1. 1 is representing the fixed link with which crank is attached and on which the uh, slider is reciprocating. So second link is crank, third link is connecting rod, fourth link is slider. Now we will be counting the equivalent joints, binary joints or lower pairs. So here there is one turning pair which is lower, another turning pair and here the connecting rod will be joining with the piston pin or gudgeon pin and that is also another turning pair and this slider will be sliding with respect to the ground so it is a sliding pair again the sliding pair is a lower pair so there are three turning pairs and one sliding pair anyway four in total lower pairs so if you are counting uh, the value of n equal to 4, j equal to number of lower pairs, which is 4. There is no higher pair or pair with the point or line contact, so h equal to 0. So here also degree of freedom is equal to 1. Degree of freedom 1 means if I am giving some input theta angle to the crank, then this will be having some displacement for this slider x. And this displacement you can represent as a function of theta, means there is only a one variable theta using which you can calculate all the displacement or all the other parameters means this displacement is a function or it will be depending upon this theta angle so the degree of freedom of this mechanism is one and now here having a gear mechanism where two gears are there and each of these gears are fixed to ground and they are making meshing or contact so here if you're counting the total number of links one is ground second is the first gear and the number 3 is representing the uh, the second gear. So there is only total number of 3 links are there. Next to J, J is the number of lower pairs. So here there is one turning pair. Here there is another turning pair which has lower pairs. And in between this when these gears are being meshed, there they are making a higher pair. Means they are making a point or uh, line contact when these gears are in mesh. So here you are having a higher pair h equal to 1. So this pair will be known as rolling pair where the relative motion is rolling which is a 2 degree of freedom pair. So you can consider it as a higher pair. So finally you will be getting the degree of freedom of this mechanism as 1. That is the degree of freedom of this mechanism. And here you are having another sample mechanism where the number of links are numbered and the degree different joints are also shown. You can pause for a moment and you can see the calculation for its degree of freedom. And here another sample mechanism is there. Here you can also see the num how the links are numbered, how the joints, equivalent binary joints are numbered and how the higher pairs are numbered. Here you are having a point contact which is giving a higher pair. So which value is 1. And here also you can see the uh, how you are finding the degree of freedom. So this is the complete mobility analysis of mechanisms, planar mechanisms mostly. So we have seen some examples for calculating the degrees of freedom. So in next video, we will be uh, studying the Gribler's criteria and the introduction to four bar chains, which is the basic mechanism, four bar mechanism we have to start with. Thank you.